Hi, everybody. Uh, so, who's here uh, heard of Nginx before? Great. Awesome. Who's actively using it? That's very good. It's very good. All right, so my talk today is Nginx selectors. But first, I'll let they made a wonderful introduction of me already. <laughs> so, but basically, yeah, I work at Google uh, for the last few years working on the Firebase console. Uh, I do contribute to the NGRX platform as well, uh, and I maintain the NGRX as a whole within Google and do some internal Angular and TypeScript uh, courses as well. But we have a packed agenda there. We'll start with the, what selectors are, if you're not familiar with them. And we'll see then how their role expanded since the uh, NGRX version 4 was introduced last year. We'll see how they took the responsibility of type checking uh, of, these, uh, of the store as well. We'll learn the advanced uh, selector creation through the Create Selector Factory. And finally, we would look uh, in the folder structure and where our selectors should be placed. So what are the selectors? Well, selectors are functions that describe how we take a slice of global state and provide them to the components. Let's see how we do it. Uh, for example, we have a store that has a method select. In there, we provide a, 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 a function. In this case, it's an array function, um, error function. And then uh, this error function, we sometimes pull out into a different function, here is a product selector, to be more helpful. And then we would use it in our store select. And these functions, the product selector, these are called uh, selectors, it's us. Selectors became helpful to battle one of the most common mistakes that we do in the store with, when we do state management. And let's, for example, look at this. Uh, interface. It's a product interface. It has an ID, it has a type, it has price, it could have other fields as well. And we have a product state that describes some piece of state of our global um, state application. And there we have a products, which is an array of those product. We have product IDs, there's a string array of the IDs of those products. And we have a selected type here as well. Do you see the problem here? And the problem here is the product IDs. It's a derived state. And what's its derived state? It's something that's already part of the store anyway, products. We can easily get it from there. So derived states is a duplicated piece of state that was, that's sort of transformed to be easier consumed by the components. But this is definitely a wrong approach. So what should we do? Well, first of all, let's get rid of that. Shouldn't be there. Instead, what we have is our selector function, the product ID selector, that would take our order state, select the products, and map through products and pick the IDs out of it. This is how selectors help battle one of the biggest problems. Moreover, uh, they produce something that's called a view model. So since NGRX uh, version 4 was introduced last year, uh, it, it actually became very, very helpful. You, some of you might, might have already heard of uh, store module for feature or a FX module for feature. And they allow you to add the feature state uh, to the global state separately. So you don't and describe the entire global state of application in one place. You can dynamically add pieces of that state separately. And you do access it by the product key. For example, here it's the product's feature. This was a major win for the applications like Firebase console, because 
it's large, and, maintain, and having the entire state described in one place was a big problem. So here, for example, again, is a typical ng module, which has product key. And since we're using the for feature, we also need a, a special function uh, called uh, create feature selector that helps us select the top of this feature. This would be the top of the state that we care about, the feature state. And for example, here, we have, we have get products, create selector. And here already, we use this product state, which is a feature state, and select our products. Let's compare it to what we had before. There's our product selector using global state and our feature selector, sub-feature selector, has a product state, which is feature. So let's say we have an array of products, all different types. We have books, we have furniture, we have some gadgets, and we have, a, for example, some kind of filter of the current selected product type. Let's say it would be furniture, for example. What we can do, the, and those two states could be placed in the different parts of, this, of the store. What we can do, though, we can combine them. And our create selector allows us to do it. We can get, get all products in one place, from one place. That's a selector. Get selected type from other part. So we have, can combine multiple selectors in one. And then we take the results that they provide and do something with them. For example, in this case, we would filter those products by the selected type. Uh, this, this function is called the projector function. The other big feature of uh, selectors is memoization. Let me show you what it is. Say we have those same products. And I already have a product uh, type furniture, which is a selected type, for example. When they get in together for the first time into the selector, they, they are processed, so the projector function is executed. And we get a result. For example, we selected the furniture out of all the products that we have. But the second time the selector is called, with exactly the same inputs, exactly the same products and exactly the same furniture selected, the result, the, the, the function, the projector function is not executed anymore. It gives us a cached result back. Why does it help? When it gets the cached result back, now components that select that have the same instance of the object. And what does it mean? If it means that if you have, like, for example, a push de change detection, you will not re-render the component because, well, nothing changed, really. So again, you call it a third time, you still get a cache result with the same inputs. So memoization, if we have the same inputs, we get the result, cache result back. Here, get products and get selected type are our inputs. And if they stay the same, our projector function is not called. So we'll take a look again at the same uh, selector as we've been using already in a few examples. So we create a selector out of the same products that we had. And we would use the select type, select the selected type, which stays the same here as well. Again, the first time they're processed, we get our array back, right? of furniture, of table and chair in this case. But what happens when you add another item to the products? For example, another book. Well, that means that we have a new product now. No, no products array. It's a new one. And that means that the input has changed. And it also means that our functions will be executed again. For example, here's our new book in there. 
and the fridge selector. Process again. And we get our products. So, but what we get back is an array of products which is similar, but not exactly the same. It's a new instance because it was executed again. So it's same, but it's different. And that means that our components would still trigger the change detection and would re-render again, or even though technically nothing really changed for that particular selection. Can we do better? Uh, but yes, of course we can. So what we really want is um, our uh, something like is equal function to compare two instances of array to, that contain the same element means that those arrays are the same and we shouldn't care about them. Uh, for example, here, A and B are arrays. And if the length is the same and every element from uh, A is included in B, uh, we shouldn't run it. And to help battle with that, we have to create a, a custom a memoize a function. And its signature is uh, pretty in, uh, straightforward. So for example, it has to return two functions back, a uh, memoized and a reset. Reset just um, resets the last cached result, and we're not really using it. Um, but what we care about is memoized one. So here, t is a projector function, and we apply all the arguments that we have to it and get a result back. If there is, uh, if the cache is empty, or our result, a new result, and the previous result uh, are not the same, this is the is equal that we just wrote in the previous slide, then we would yeah, reassign uh, results to the last result and return those results. That means that something has changed, and we want to trigger change detection for that. But if nothing happened, we're returning a cached result. But, and then we have this custom MOS function, so how do we use it? So there's a special function called create selector factory. And we would use our custom MOIs in there instead of the create selector. Now our get products by selected type becomes smarter. And if the selected type doesn't change and the irrelevant product is added, this is not executed and we get the cache result back. Okay. So here's again, this create selector factory. We get a cache result back. There's more. We had to write this custom memoize function. But I noticed that I had to use it quite often, right? And I didn't want to create every time or you know, put it somewhere else. So I decided to, pull it, pull, to push it to the NGRX platform itself. And as of two weeks ago, now we have another helper function within NGRX that you can use it directly. It's called result memoize. And what it takes is a projector function and our compare, equality comparison function as well. And we would use it the same way as we just used the custom memoize before. All right, so type checking. As we've seen, uh, selectors are created from other selectors all the way to the main feature selector. And because of it, they keep track of the type as well from top selector. So for example, create feature selector here specifies that the product state is the state of our feature. And everything else follows along. This is uh, what we don't have to write, but is typically inferred when we write a, a, a selector. The first one is a, is a global type. And as you might have noticed, the features don't care about global type. The second one is a product state. This is the type of the first argument of this uh, create selector. 
And the last one, product array, is the result that it provides. So all this is now inferred. And because of it, the users of a selector know what a type is. So since selectors are now checking the types themselves, how do we inject the store? Say we have a filtered product component. And it has a filtered product um, selector. As you can see, it infers the observable of product array type right away because of the selector. We don't have to even type it. So uh, stores global type now doesn't really exist because our store would usually contain a uh, second of multiple features. And we just learned selectors are keeping type of themselves. So what do we do with the store? How do we inject it? Well, we can just inject it with the empty object. No type. Doesn't matter. That's not his job to follow anymore. OK. And lastly, let's see where we put selectors now. Again, this is the folder structure that we adopted uh, at Google. This is a little bit different from what the Interacts example uh, provides. But we found this works really, really well for us. So say we have a following structure. The app we have, and we have a feature called cart. And, we have, and cart has a sub-feature, cart sub-feature. So we put actions, reducer, and effects, if there are any, deep down where they actually are used. We also put actions, effects, reducer on the feature level, the cart level. This is because um, those reducers are typically combining other reducers from all the sub-features. But as you might notice, the selectors are right there at the bottom. Actually, here, there again. We put them only at the top level of the feature folder. And why? Well, because mostly for the discoverability. These are our APIs now, right? Our selectors are APIs to the store. Because and all the components within the feature are using them. And the cross feature could also use them. So we have to, they have to be easily discoverable. So to summarize all of it, what are selectors now? They're part of the store API. Other features might uh, use them to access different parts of the state. They're often uh, the ones that create the view models for other components to consume, leaving the store state a lot cleaner and without the right state. They help refactoring by keeping the select, uh, select logic in one place and outside of the components. So if we have to d change the description of our store, we don't have to readjust in every component, we just do it in the selectors. They took the responsibility of type checking. Store can now be injected with the empty type and as you probably guessed already, that was a lie from uh, uh, dependency injection anyway, because dependency injection doesn't know, doesn't know what, well, it doesn't care what type you provide, because it provides, uh, injects by the class, for example. And lastly, uh, they further improved the performance of the application by bringing the memorization. Um, you've probably heard of this a few times already as Angular in-depth blog. I'll be uh, summarizing the, today's talk and, and, and writing an article there as well. So if you're not following there, please do. And I'll also tweet it uh, when it's ready as well. So that would be it for me. Thank you.